this is the last lecture in the series of epitaxial growth of uh, single crystal. We have discussed about the liquid phase epitaxy, then vapor phase epitaxy which is popularly known as CVD and today we shall come across the molecular beam epitaxy MBE. You know that this uh, molecular beam epitaxy, it is uh, a physical vapor deposition. This is not chemical vapor deposition and you need not to uh, use any vapor phase reaction that is not required here. And uh, molecular beam epitaxy is very much uh, uh, useful and it has many advantages over other kind of epitaxial growth techniques in the sense that extreme precise control of doping and heterostructure can be done using this molecular beam epitaxy. Okay. So, now so far as this epitaxial process in MB is concerned you see that it involves the reaction of one or more thermal beams of atoms or molecules with a crystalline surface under ultra high vacuum conditions. So, that is the main theme in MB that you need ultra high vacuum condition. It is of the order of 10 to the power minus 8 Pascal. So, uh, how high it is? What do you mean by Pascal? Newton per meter square. So, uh, when 1 Newton of force is exerted on 1 meter square area, then it is known as the Pascal. So, it is very, very ultra high vacuum condition and uh, if you co convert it into tor, so how much tor it is? It comes out to be 1 tor, uh, what is the relation between Pascal and tor? Yes, so it is uh, how much uh, tor it is? 1 tor equals to almost 10 to the power 5 Pascal. So, 10 to the power minus 8 Pascal means how much tor? Minus 13. So, it is very very high vacuum. So, that is the problem with MBE that means it is very ultra high vacuum system. So, now if you compare with this MBE system with the CVE system, what we find? We find that in CVD or VPE, you need not to use any ultra high vacuum condition that is not required for CVD or VPE. There is LP CVD. In LP CVD, we find that low pressure that means some very small amount of pressure vacuum condition is required. It is not 10 to the power 13 tor, it, it, it can be 1 tor, 2 tor that much, not more than that. And another thing is that because of this ultra high vacuum condition, the growth rate is very, very slow. In MB, the growth rate is very, very slow. Sometimes if you want to make 1 micron thickness of epitaxial layer using MB, you have to wait for several hours. You have to wait for several hours. In CVD, we find that the growth rate is comparatively faster. In some cases, you find that 1 micron per hour or even 10 micron per hour in CVD. But in MB, it is very, very slow process because of the ultra high vacuum condition. But you can precisely control the chemical compositions and doping profiles. Chemical compositions and doping profiles. I mentioned several times that when we talk about the doping profiles, suppose it is a PN junction. That means, if I draw the doping profile, you see that left side I have doped with P type on the right side it is doped with n type. So, if I draw the doping profile then it is like this. Right? 
that means this junction between p and n it is very stiff and abrupt it is very stiff and abrupt say it is 10 to the power 17 it is 10 to the power 19 the transition between 10 to the power 17 and 10 to the power 19 is very very sharp extremely sharp you see it is like delta function so that is possible in mb when you come across different types of devices that those are there in your physics of semiconductor device curriculum say mod fit modulation doped field effect transistor okay or quantum cascade laser or quantum well infrared photo detector quip you will find that extreme control of the doping at different layers is important because then only that effects will be prominent right and you know that and probably in 1985 von klinging was awarded nobel prize for the discovery of quantum hall effect right so this quantum hall effect was discovered due to the availability of two dimensional electron gas okay due to the availability of two dimensional electron gas and that is possible due to the formation of quantum well because two dimensional electron gas is possible only in devices like quantum well not in bulk okay i shall mention this in this lecture that in this age of nano technology precise control of your spatial coordinates or the size that is possible only using this type of growth that is the mb type of growth quantum dot you want to form a quantum dot of say diameter 1 angstrom 2 angstrom 5 angstrom then only that quantum effects will be visible otherwise the quantum effects will not be visible okay so those type of dots you can make using this type of epitaxial layers epitaxial techniques also you see that the single crystal multi layer structures with thickness down to mono layer what is mono layer what is single layer no yes mono layer means suppose the diameter of one atom is say x angstrom example 3 angstrom say 4 angstrom so that means it is one atom 4 angstrom it is second atom 4 angstrom it is third atom 4 angstrom it is fourth atom 4 angstrom so you can form one layer of single atoms okay you can control you can make two atoms make layer it can be 2.5 what is meant by 2.5 that means two fully grown layers and one layer is half grown not fully grown okay so that is very very important that using such kind of epitaxial techniques growth down to mono layer is possible okay in some cases say uh, if you want to fabricate say quantum well laser quantum well laser you know what is a laser highly directional beam of light due to the stimulated emission of radiation and in led light emitting diode it is the spontaneous type of radiation so difference between an led and laser is the stimulation emission in laser and spontaneous emission in now spontaneous emission is very easy to obtain okay say this is your conduction band it is your valence band and if you excite the electrons form the valence band to the conduction band it is excited say so a large number of electrons can be excited to the conduction band leaving holes in the valence band 
when the electrons will come down to the valence band they will recombine with the holes and in this process electromagnetic wave will be generated because of the dissipation of the excess energy which it has. So, now this electron and hole recombines with the emission of H nu or the electromagnetic radiation this is a process of spontaneous emission you do not have any control over the de excitation of the electrons from the conduction band to the valence band you do not have any control they come down of their own they recombine of their own. So, that is the spontaneous emission that is why it is known as spontaneous, but for laser what kind of emission is required it is the stimulated emission why stimulated emission is required. Here you see that this H nu it is the energy of the emitted light nu is the frequency H is the Planck's constant. Now, depending on the frequency that means the nu which is given by lambda by c. So, different colors of light are emitted, but here you see that nu can be different types of frequencies that means this nu consists of nu 1, nu 2, nu 3, nu 4, nu 5. So, that is the reason that if you plot the emission spectrum from an LED, this is intensity versus wavelength, wavelength intensity. So, this is the typical spectrum of the emission from an light emitting diode and if you measure the FWHM full width at half maximum, what is that? Full width of half maximum is first you take the maximum intensity then make it half say maximum intensity is 100 percent. So, 50 percent is your I by 2 and this difference is known as the full width at half maximum. This is maximum this is half maximum. So, full width is half maximum and if I consider that this point is lambda 2 and this point is lambda 1. So, what is the FWHM? FWHM is lambda 2 minus lambda 1. What is the meaning of this FWHM? Not changes, many wavelengths are there in, in the light. The light is not a monochromatic light. Okay. Here the light is not a monochromatic light, it is a mixture of many wavelengths that means many colors when we talk about the frequency or wavelengths means colors basically for a layman it is the colors. So, here many colors are involved because if it is a monochromatic light then the FWHM should not be lambda 2 minus lambda 1 because lambda 2 minus lambda 1 means say delta lambda and this delta lambda has some finite value it can be 100 nanometer, it can be 50 nanometer if I plot in the nanometer, it can be several angstrom if the x axis is in the angstrom. Okay. So, this FWHM is high in case of light emitting diode that means it is not a monochromatic light for laser it is the monochromatic light. So, when you need any monochromatic light with highly directional beam coherent output it is not coherent also it is not coherent also why because the nu's are different the frequencies are different. Okay. In laser if I plot this diagram this diagram is basically the intensity versus wavelength diagram you will find that for laser it is like this or precisely it is that means the FWHM is very very narrow small 
here this is FWHM, this is I, this is 50 percent of I and if you take the value of say here lambda 3 lambda 4. So, here FWHM is basically for laser it is lambda 4 minus lambda 3 very narrow. Okay. So, since it is very very narrow, so you can consider that the light consists of only one wavelength or very near to that wavelength. That means, the say if it is a blue light, then peak will be at 4 to 0, lambda 4 will be 4 to 2, lambda 3 will be 4 1 8. Okay. So, that means, the variation is from 4 1 8 to 4 2 2 that means, just 4 nanometer. Okay. So, that is the implication of that F W H M for laser say this is ideally it should have been a delta function then only one wavelength precisely one say it is 4 to 0 nanometer if you plot intensity versus wavelength wavelength say in nanometer ideally it should have been but this is not possible because the emission or transition of the electrons and holes are basically the statistical process so, from a statistical process you cannot expect the output will be a delta function. So, there will be some variation like this and this variation if I take the F W H M say on the left side this is say 418 nanometer and the right side it is say 4 to 2 nanometer. Then what is the F W H M? Only 4 nanometer. So, it, it is blue you can consider it as a monochromatic coherent beam of light you can consider because the F W H M is very very small. But in case of LED this is say 420 nanometer and it is say 400 nanometer, it is say 450 nanometer. So, what we find that 50 nanometer if the FWHM 450 minus 400, 40, 50 nanometer. So, it is not precisely the monochromatic beam of light. Now, this monochromatic, monochromatic highly coherent beam of light comes from a, a special structure which is known as the quantum well laser, quantum well structure. Okay. During our discussion on the optoelectronic devices in the next semester, we shall come across that kind of a structure in optoelectronics. Okay. So, this quantum well laser, this quantum well structure is formed only by the application of the molecular beam epitaxial system by bulk crystal growth or by LP even in using some kinds of CVD you cannot precisely control the structure because stimulated emission highly dependent on the doping concentration of the different layers, doping concentration of different layer. You know that for stimulated emission in a structure say for a light uh, laser what to do that the doping must be degenerate type of doping. That means, what is degenerate type of doping? That means, where the carrier concentration is very, very high. Carrier concentration is very, very high that is known as the degenerate type of doping. That means, already there are some electrons in the conduction band or the Fermi level in that case 
lie inside the conduction belt. Then it is known as the degenerate semiconductor. So, when it is possible? It is possible only when the doping is very precise. Okay, say 10 to the power 19 per centimeter cube, 7 into 8, uh, sorry, 7.8 into 10 to the power 19 <laughs> centimeter cube inverse doping only will give you the degenerate type of conductivity. Then this is possible only for in by the MBE growth, because you see that for degenerate semiconductor, in degenerate semiconductor you see that there will be some, the Fermi level will be in the conduction band. That means, some portion of the conduction band is filled with electrons. The Fermi level in the is in the conduction band, what is the physical meaning? The physical meaning is that some portion of the conduction band is filled with electrons. So, that means, there are some electrons in the conduction band. Then, you apply some stimulation to send the conduction band electrons to the valence band some stimulation you then apply. With some stimulation say this electron comes down to here, then second electron comes down here. That is by stimulating the electrons in the conduction band. So, that means some stimulation will be there, so that the electrons come down to the valence band. That is why it is known as the stimulated emission you are dictating the electrons to come down from the conduction band to the valence band, you are dictating and that dictation is by means of some stimulated, you are using say light or any kind of excitation to ask the electrons to come down to the, okay. they are at the rooftop and you are throwing from the rooftop to the ground. Is it excitation or just heating? Not heating, basically it is done by uh, various means, but uh, the, the application of light is one of the important factor. In semiconductor laser the principle is different, but normally the stimulated is done by some application of some stimulating force. It may be, it may be heat, but heat is generally not used. Oh, heating, no, no, no. In, in, in laser, you cannot heat it. Heat means HIT, you cannot heat it. If someone is, is say, some of your friends are at the rooftop, you can heat them to fall to the ground, but electronically, you cannot heat. Some application of some force. Sir, excitation means uh, get energy and uh, go to the high energy state, but in this case, uh, electrons come from higher energy state to lower energy state. Yes. No, where where it will go? I I I uh, already discussed the thing that the electrons are high, highly choosy element particles. You cannot send the electrons anywhere. So that is not possible. So when we shall discuss about the laser or the LED at that time, we shall concentrate those things. But some stimulating agent must be there to throw them away from the conduction band to the valence band. How it is achieved, I shall show you. Okay, that is not purview of this class. Sir, that means for stimulated emission, yes. we must have a degenerate semiconductor. Yes, sure. Must. Yes, for laser, that is why I am uh, devoting so much time. Then what, what, what is the use of uh, discussing all those things? Okay, the, what you have thought, it is it is the correct thing. For that reason, only MB is used. That highly degenerate semiconductors with very very pure layer, free from any kind of contamination, any kind of defect, must be there to obtain a quantum well laser, which will give you give you highly directional 
monochromatic beam of light. So, it must be degenerate. And because of it is a very high vacuum system is used, so the, so the growth, growth rate is very slow. So, you see that uh, some of the terms we have introduced in this class, one is that it is ultra high vacuum condition, second is that uh, mono layers, that is also very important thing that in some applications uh, say 1.5 mono layer, 1.8 mono layer, 3 mono layers of growth is required and that you can achieve using MBE. Even it is not possible using MOCVD or CVD VP, not possible mono layer type of growth. So, that is the, the reason that we can tell, we can say that MB is the ultimate it is the ultimate in film deposition control, cleanliness and in situ chemical characterization capability it has, that is the ultimate. It is the end of the epitaxy, it is very very useful technique. Apart from the control cleanliness, why, why we are using the term cleanliness, because it is high vacuum system, in high vacuum system there must not be any foreign atoms or foreign impurities, because you are continuously sucking at that high vacuum, basically nothing will be there in the chamber. If you take a volume and if you start sucking the air from it and if you can achieve 10 to the power 8 minus 8 Pascal, then what should be there in the volume? Nothing, everything has gone. So, there will not be any impurity no even trace amount of any chemical or foreign impurity or atoms will not be there at that high vacuum system. And one advantage of this MB is that it has in situ characterization. What is in situ characterization? In situ characterization is that during growth at the growth chamber itself during growth you can characterize the grown layer, its chemical composition and its surface morphology. Okay. So, suppose you want to grow aluminum, gallium, arsenide say, for some application you need 0.3 aluminum, 0.7 gallium. Okay. So, you start MBE growth, from the in situ characterization you can find whether aluminum is 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 or 0 0.27, that can be determined, that means the chemical composition can be precisely determined. So, if you find that aluminum is now 0.38, so what you will do? You will stop growth immediately you can stop growth, because you need a aluminum 0.3. So, if you find at any stage that aluminum <coughs> concentration is high, higher than what you want, then you stop growth. Why you will stop growth? So, that more chemicals are not busted out, your time, your cost should not be much high. So, you stop it because that kind of a layer will not be of any use. If you need aluminum 0.3, then and if you get aluminum 0.38, that means you discard this growth. So, that type of characterization during growth. Another, another thing is that the surface morphology can be viewed. You can observe the surface morphology, whether it is rough, whether it is smooth whether any patches are there, whether any scratches are there, patches, scratches, dislocations, okay. you can see by the application of some electron diffraction spectroscopy that I shall discuss. Reed is there R H W E D that is a electron diffraction spectroscopy, reflection high energy electron diffraction read. Right. So, using that spectroscopic technique, you can see the 
structure or the surface morphology of the grown layer. If you see that the surface is rough, when the surface will be rough? When there will be a problem with the composition, Whether, when there will be a problem with the lattice matching, then only the surface morphology will not be shining. Otherwise, in epitaxy, most of the cases, the surface morphology will be very shiny, very bright. And if you see that it is not so, then you can think that something happened during the growth, you stop growth. So, those in situ characterization facilities are there in MB, which are not available in other epitaxial systems. So, this is the typical MB system. The, what is this? This you see that these are the effusion cell, this is known as the effusion cell E F F U S I O N. effusion cell. Okay. Now, <coughs> what is effusion? You see that effusion it is the process in which individual molecules flow through a hole yes without collisions between the molecules. Okay. without collision between the molecules. It is the process in which individual molecules flow through a hole without collisions between the molecules. And it is possible, it is possible or it occurs if the diameter of the hole is considerably smaller than the mean free path of the molecules. Okay. So, this is very important that if the diameter of the hole is considerably smaller than the mean free path of the molecule. So, one another additional term we are now introducing it is the mean free path of the molecules and the whole MB system is based on this concept that the mean free path of the molecules will be high, mean free path of the molecules will be high and that is the reason ultra high vacuum system is required. I shall show you by the application of mathematics that how this high vacuum is related to the mean free path. So, that from the source to the substrate site, the molecules of the materials or the consisting chemicals are freely, they can freely move to the substrate site without any collision. Okay. So, first thing is that you heat, suppose you want to make gallium arsenide. So, you take gallium, say this is gallium, this is gallium and it is arsenic. So, this is an open, that is another open, it is known as the effusion cell. In in some books, you will find that these are known as K N U D 
S C N. Okay, that is that is nodes and cell. Almost same thing. Almost it is the effusion oven or effusion cell type of concept. <coughs> it is now this effusion oven or this nodes and cell, whatever be the case, it contains the elemental materials which are used for the growth of the semiconductor. Say gallium is used and arsenic is used. So, you heat gallium and arsenic, they are placed in a ultra high vacuum chamber. All the ovens can be heated separately, they have shutter so that when the shutter is closed, no molecules from that particular oven comes out and when it is heated the molecular beam without any collision, it will not suffer any collision because of the ultra high vacuum condition of the system. This beam of molecules will directly impinge or directly hit the substrate or the wafer which is heated by some means of heat, some heated substrates are there, okay, heating elements are there. So, the substrate is heated and atomic beam of the materials or the molecular beam of the materials directly fall on the falls on the substrate without any collision. So, that means a beam of molecules travels from the oven to the substrate side that is why it is known as the molecular beam epitaxy. The concept of beam comes in this manner. Okay, the concept of beam that means you heat gallium, so gallium molecules will be formed, then continuously if you heat continue continue if you continually heat continuously heat it then the molecular beam of gallium will come out from the effusion oven to the substrate side since the it is very high vacuum it, the vacuum is very very high it is ultra high vacuum system there will be no collision so the directly the beam will fall on the substrate that is the reason that it is termed as the molecular beam epitaxy then this is the effusion oven. See this is silicon, this is gallium, this is arsenic, this is aluminum, this is beryllium okay? because this silicon is used for N type and beryllium is used for P type dopant. Then gallium, arsenic, aluminum are there because you can grow gallium aluminum arsenide because most of this development of the epitaxial technique came out during the gas algas system. Gas algas system means gallium arsenide, aluminum gallium arsenide system. Okay. Why this aluminum is used? Why aluminum is used? Yes, to control the band gap. Basically, the band gap increases. The band gap increases. If you add aluminum, the band gap increases. Right? And why this type of material came out? Why the people have discovered this type of a system? Why? There are many materials, even then why they were concentrated on gas algas system? No, it is because of two reason. One reason is that this wavelength that means if you add aluminum with gallium arsenide, what is the band gap of gallium arsenide? It is 1.43 electron volt. If you add some aluminum, then it will be around 1.8 electron volt. Okay from 1.43 to 1.8 electron volt. That band gap was required for 
using the first window of the fiber optic communication. Can you remember the window of the fiber optic communication on the very first day or, or in, in the uh, some first lectures in some lectures I, I cannot remember probably in one or two lectures first I show you. Okay. I showed you that there was a there was three windows in fiber optic communication. Okay. If I draw that window it is like that free hand drawing. This type of a thing. Window means what is this plot? The plot is wavelength versus yes very good attenuation yes attenuation and it is decibel per kilometer. It is for a typical silica fiber. I am talking about the fiber optic communication, where the silica fiber is used to connect a transmitter with the receiver and light passes through that silica fiber by the process of total internal reflection. Okay? Because no other type of information carrying is possible except light in fiber optics and that too by the method of total internal reflection. So, if you plot the wavelength versus attenuation, attenuation means loss, basically attenuation is loss, it is the opposite to amplification. Right. So, if you plot attenuation versus wavelength, you see that it is around 800 nanometer, it is around 1300 nanometer, it is around 1550 nanometer. Broadly, we can consider that there are three windows for fiber optic communication, that means where the losses are minimum. You see, here the loss is here here the loss is this and here the loss is this. So, this is known as the first generation window, first generation just when fiber optic communication has just started and you know that this year the Nobel prize in physics went to fiber discovery of fiber optics, optical cable it was discovered some 40 years back, but the Nobel was awarded only this time that means after 35, 40 years after the discovery cow K U O. So, so, this is the first window, this first window is 1800, 800 nanometer and this is achieved by gas L gas system. Okay, it is added by gas L gas system. Okay, so, the, so, the first thing was that gas L gas was used for the first window, first generation fiber optic communication for making light emitting diode. Because if you can use this wavelength light, then the loss will be less compared to the other light it will be further less if you use 1550 or 1300 that also discovered and present fiber optic communication supports 1550 or 1300 nanometer right so another thing is that lattice matching problem you know that in epitaxy the problem is with the lattice matching proper substrate is required and for proper substrate the lattice constant of the substrate will be equal to the lattice constant of the grown epitaxial layer. If you can remember I have showed you earlier also the lattice constant versus band gap type of plot. You see that you will see that for all values of aluminum, aluminum gallium arsenide is 
lattice match to gallium arsenide substrate. So, that is also advantage because getting a good substrate having lattice constant same with that of the epitaxial layer is very difficult. Here even if you can vary aluminum for a wide range it is lattice match to gallium arsenide substrate because algas is fabricated on gallium arsenide. So, that is the reason that gas algas system was very popular and in elemental semiconductor we take the example of silicon in compound semiconductor epitaxial gro growth we take the example of gas algas that is the most elemental materials in epitaxy. There are other materials for 1300 nanometer or 1500 nanometer we use indium, gallium, arsenide, phosphide on indium phosphide that means the substrate is indium phosphide and the material is indium, gallium, arsenide, phosphide. This is for 1300 nanometer and 1550 nanometer, but we always take the example of gas L gas system. <coughs> okay. So, this is the you, you can see that this is the nuts and cell and it is made of pyrolytic boron nitride and it can be heated. You can control the temperature and uh, there are heating filaments, the filaments are mostly tantalum. Okay, the filaments are mostly tantalums and water cooling system is there, heat sealed is there and there is a orifice shutter that means you can control the emission. There is a shutter you can stop it, you can open it, when you need arsenic you open the shutter, when you need aluminum you open the shutter, if you do not need close the shutter of aluminum so that there will be no aluminum. Okay. So, these cells are made of pyrolytic boron nitride, there is heat shielding, there is heating element and that heating element is mostly tantalum metal, then there is orifice shutter and uh, water cooling system is also there and you see that the beams are uh, made to fall on the substrate surface and they follow the cosine law, they follow the cosine law that means emission from this oven is basically something cos theta say if you consider the intensity or the flux it is cos theta, theta means making an angle from the point of emission to the substrate, the angle between the substrate and the oven orifice basically that is the theta and it always follow the cos theta law. Okay. And this nodes and cell if you consider then I can write that it is made of pyrolytic boron nitride. It can be quartz also, tungsten can be or even it can be graphite. That means, uh, a nodes and cell contains a crucible made of heating element tantalum, water cooling system heat sealed and orifice shutter. Okay. So, these are the uh, uh, 
description of a nudes and cell. The actual what is the pronunciation of this Knudsen? It is the pronunciation is N O O D S H U N, not Knudsen, it is Knudsen cell, like our Chodalski, it is not Jochalski, it is Chodalski. Okay. <coughs> So, this is uh, the description of a Knudsen cell, you see that it contains a crucible made of pyrolytic boron nitride or quad or tungsten or graphite, it has an heating element made of generally tantalum metal with water cooling system, heat sealed and orifice shutter. So, these are the, the that uh, Knudsen cells or the effusion cell, the same thing, effusion or Knudsen the same thing. Only thing is that the orifice that means the aperture uh, diameter is smaller than the mean free path of the molecules. That is the that is the only uh, condition okay. that aperture or the hole or the orifice the same thing the diameter must be considerably smaller than the mean free path. No, th yes, uh, actually, in this is the total diagram of a molecular epitactal system. Okay. In here, you see that it is only the nudes and cells only, right. And here, the other types of accessories are also there, you see. Here, this portion, the left portions are effusion cell, then this perpendicular vertical line is the is a, a shutter. Then you see that there is a read 100 kV electron gun for read, then mass spectrometer for the analysis of the residual gases, then view port you can see what is happening inside, there is a substrate holder, okay. then a liquid nitrogen cooled shroud for cooling, fluorescent screen is there why there is a fluorescent screen to see the spectrum or the streak from the read, how you will see what is there on the surface. So, that is the monitor basically, this monitor is for the read R H W E D, read system. And uh, you see that uh, there is another uh, chamber, you can uh, take the substrate from this chamber to the another chamber for further processing etcetera. So, these are the total setup and it is very complex, it is very complex one of such MBE system is there in our physics department with professor S K Rai. So, when you will go to physics depart department you can visit the instrument, it is a very complex instrument and if you see the uh, e equipment in a real space then you will find that how it looks like. Okay, so, another important consideration for the MB growth is the sticking coefficient. Sticking coefficient means basically the molecules which are coming out from the nodes and cell must stick to the substrate otherwise how the growth will take place. So, sticking coefficient is the ratio of the number of adsorbate atoms or molecules that do absorb or stick to a surface to the total number of atoms that impinge upon that surface during the same period of time. Okay. So, this is the sticking coefficient, actual number of atoms that are being adsorbed to the total number of atoms that are coming from the effusion cell to the substrate, not that the all the atoms are going to adsorb only a few percent will be adsorbed, some will be re-evaporate, some will move away. Okay, that the sticking coefficient if you see that it is very important because unless it sticks to your substrate you will not get the epitaxial layer. Gallium has a unity sticking coefficient on gallium arsenide below 480 degree centigrade. 
unity sticking uh, sticking coefficient means all the atoms of gallium stick to the substrate. If you make the growth at 480 degree centigrade or below, above that temperature it is it is less than unity that means it may be 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.5 depending on the temperature. If you increase the temperature it will be 0 0.2, 0 0.3 type of thing. Arsenic sticks only when a gallium adatom plane is already established. Okay. Arsenic sticks only when a gallium adatom plane is already established. What is adatom? Adatom is an atom adsorbed on a surface so that it will migrate over the surface. Add atom means adsorbed atom basically, add atom means adsorbed atom on a surface so that it will migrate over the surface because first it will adsorb and then it will migrate, then only there will be uniform growth. So, that is why it is known as the add atom. So, now arsenic sticks only when a gallium add atom plane is already established, otherwise arsenic will not stick. So, these are the considerations. So, in the next lecture we shall conclude our discussion on MB. Thank you.